Okay, the first step is to set up the mandrel. I'm going to do a 4 byte Turks head. So on this collar I've already set uh, the 4 pins, as you can see here, in opposite quadrants. Now I'm sliding this collar over just so I can match it up. Make sure the Allen wrench screw is on the outside. Just going to hand tighten most of them. That'll be adequate to hold them in place. Now I'll slide the mandrel. I'm going to set it apart, I don't know, about two inches or so. Make sure the pins are lined up. Then I'll use the Allen wrench that comes with the mandrel to just tighten one of these down. There we go. Keep the collar from sliding. I've also um, took a piece of masking tape, labeled pin number one. The pin on the opposite side is labeled number one on the right or on the right side. Then I've got number two, and the pin on the back, number two, and so on. Three, three, four, four. Example, and I'm going to use the brass lacing needle, uh, the one with the flat tip. I sell it on paracordis.com. It's uh, my favorite for doing Turk's head knots. Now the um, that will be the working end. The other end, I'm going to take a piece of masking tape and I'm going to tape it under pin number one, leaving six or eight inches um, of working end because I'm going to use that to tuck later. So I'm going to set a piece of masking tape right here. Okay, now, starting at pin 1, I'm going to work my way to pin 1 on the other side. I'm going to do a whole wrap, one whole wrap, which is around the back and back to the front. A wrap and a half. And I'm going to turn pin number 1 on the back. Pin number 1. Okay, so as I come to the front, that would be a half wrap, and as I go to the back, that's a full wrap, because we're coming from a pin that's in the back. So that would be one wrap as I, as I reach the back, and now as I come around to the front, it's one and a half. So I went one and a half that way, and I go to pin number two. Having gone one and a half wraps this way. So there you go. Here's your one and a half wraps that way. And here's your one and a half wraps this way. That completes the first cycle. The first cycle, when you do an even number of pins, any even number of, of bytes, the first, the second um, half of the first cycle is entirely over. Now we're in to the second cycle. The first half of the second cycle is also entirely over and it 
basically uh, is the same number of wraps. So as you can see, I spin here. We go around entirely over the previous pass. And to pin number two. All right, so just try to keep the spacing even on all your wraps if you can. Reduces the amount of, of dressing you'll have to do of the knot later. So that completes um, actually the second, that's the first half of the second cycle. So I've gone up, back, and up again. That process consisted entirely of wrapping over the previous wraps, and that is always what you do when you do a Turk's head with an even number of bites up to this point. Now moving forward throughout the rest of the knot, in this case we have four bites, but if you had um, eight bites or ten or six, the process would be the same. Every other half cycle you do, you have to do the opposite at a strand crossing. You have to do the opposite of what the previous strand did. So as we move now back through this next cycle, we're going to follow this strand. That is what I'm referring to as the previous strand. We're going to do the opposite of what it does at every crossing. So here it crosses over this strand, so we will go under that strand. I got a knot there, I'll have to untie. Okay, now as I follow the strand, it goes under this one, so I will go over that one. Now this strand here goes over that one, so I will go under. Now this goes under, so I will go over. It goes over, so I go under. Now once you've reached the end, whether it's the left end or the right end, and the cord you are following goes around one of the pins and forms a bite, then you are no longer following it at the moment. You just want to do the opposite of what you did in your previous crossing. So the working strand went under this, so the next one I will go over it as I return to the next pin. Then I proceed as I just did. I do the opposite of the strand that went before me, which is this one. So here, as you can see, it goes over, so I go under. Now the strand I'm following goes under, so I go over. The strand I am following goes over, so I go under. The strand I am following goes under, so I go over. The strand I'm following goes over, so I go under. Now, the strand I was following went over this pin, formed a bite. 
So I just do the opposite of what I just did with my working end. I just went under, so I will go over and go around the next pin and continue in the same fashion, doing the opposite of what the previous strand, which is this one, does at every crossing. So here it goes under, so I will go over. Here it goes over, so I will go under. Now it goes under, so I go over. Now it goes under again. So pay attention now. So people have a preconceived notion that a Turk's head is all over, under, over, under. But that doesn't apply in every half cycle. So just remember and, and stick to this rule. Do the opposite of what the previous chord did. If the previous strand went under two, then you're going to go over two with the working strand. If the previous strand went over two, you're going to go under two. Follow the rule. Don't think that everything is always going over, under, over, under. In this case, the strand I'm following went under, so I went over. Now the strand I'm following goes under again, so I go over again. Now it goes over, so I go under. As you can see, it goes under this one and under the next one. So I have to go over two because it went under two. And then I reach this strand, which it goes over. So I have to go under. And as the strand I was following passes around the bite, I just do the opposite of what I did on my previous crossing. I went under this guy, so I go over this guy into pin number four. Now I continue up, taking care to follow this previous strand and do the opposite of what it does. So it goes under, I go over. It goes over, I go under. Now, as you can see, it goes under, under. So I will go over, over. Then it goes over this one, so I have to go under that one. Now it goes under, under, so I will go over, over. And then it goes over this one, so I will go under it. And because the strand I'm following passes over a bite, forms a bite at this peg, I just look back and see what I just did. I went under a cord, so I will go over the cord as I go to the next pin, pin number four. Now this is the last trip down. I will follow the previous strand, do the opposite of what it did. In doing so now, I will complete the formation of the knot. So this strand went over here, so I will go under.
Now it goes under this guy, so I go over it. Then it goes over this one, so I go under it. The more bites you have, the smaller the space potentially becomes that you must stay between. So you don't want to lose track of that. Make sure you keep these things spaced as evenly as you can. Continue to follow along without jumping the track that you're on. So that went under here. I go over it. Next one goes over here, so I have to go under it. This guy goes under here, so I go over it. The next one goes over, so I go under. This goes under here, so I go over it. Then it goes over here, so I go under it. Here, the cord I'm following goes under, so I go over. Now the cord I'm following goes over, so I go under. And then as I've said each time around, as I reach the end, I look and see I just went under, so I go over. Back to pin number one, essentially completing the knot. Now we're setting up for the Turk's head knot with an odd number of bites. For this example, I'm going to do three bite Turk's head. So I've set the mandrel up with three pins on each side. There's a little distinction here between the way they're set up with an odd number of pins. The same thing applies in that on the left you have pin number one. The corresponding pin on the right hand side, corresponding pin number one, is directly opposite on the back that's the same thing when you're doing an even number of bites. But what you'll notice is because every corresponding pin is directly opposite on the other side, when you look at it this way, you see here's pin number one, here's pin number one on this side. So there is no, you, don't, you won't see a pin on the opposite side corresponding to uh, directly to these like you did when you look down the line on the even setup. But all you need to uh, be sure of is that each pin has an opposing pin directly opposite it. So here's number two, here's number two. Finally, here's number three and directly opposite is number three. So three and three. You can see them opposite each other. So here we go with the first half cycle with an odd number of bites. I will do one and a half wraps to pin number one on the back. Pin number one. one. Now immediately the odd bite Turk's head differs from the even bite Turk's head. The even bite continued all the way down to complete the first cycle just by going over the previous passes. Well now 
on this half cycle, you proceed by going under the first strand you cross and then alternating over, under, over, under, depending on how many wraps you've done till you get to pin number two on the other side. This applies to every odd bite long Turk's head. So coming around the pin, you go under the first strand you cross. Then we will proceed the same number of wraps as I did on the first half cycle. But I will alternate over under. So I come around, I went under the first one. That means I'm going to go over the second one. So you're going to be going over it on the back here. Over the second one. And then under again. So we're alternating over, under. That will give me the same number of wraps that I did in the first half cycle. It will bring me to pin number two on the left side. See, this is a lot more difficult to get started than is an even um, number of bites because you're immediately going into over unders, over unders. So here we are at pin number two. Quick review. Came off of pin number one on the back, went under the very first strand I crossed. Then I went over the next strand I crossed. And then as I came around, I alternated to an under. That would repeat if you had more wraps. Under the first, then over, under, over, under, over, under until you come to the bottom and round. Okay, this first half of the second cycle begins like the second half of the second cycle when you were doing an even bite Turk's head. What I mean is at this point forward through the rest of the knot, I'm just going to do the opposite of what the previous strand did at every crossing. So here we had an under, so I will go over. And here we go over previously, so I will go under here. Okay, that cord that I'm following went up over. So I'll just look back and see. I had just gone under, so now I'll go over around to pin number two on the right side. Okay, now I proceed around pin number two on the right side. See the cord I'm following went under, so I go over. Cord I'm following here goes over, so I go under. The cord I'm following goes over again. So we had over, over, so I will go under, under. Again, remember, it's not always over, under, over, under.
this strand goes under so I go over and this strand goes under so I go over now I just do the opposite of what I just did as I come over this last cord at the end before turning the pin to complete the half cycle and I round pin number three on the left side the cord I'm following goes over so I will go under The cord I am following goes under, so I go over. And that which I'm following goes under again, so I go over. So that was a um, under one, under two, so I go over one, over two. Now I'm going, it's going over, so I'm going to go under this cord goes over so I go under And because the cord I was following went over a pin, I just look back to see what I, what I just did. I went under, so I will go over as the next cord as I go to the next pin. Okay, this should be our last trip down. Previous cord went over this crossing, so I will go under. Now this cord went under, so I go over. Now here it goes over, so I go under. One thing you, you, you will usually find, or well, you will always find, that your last half cycle, as the knot is completing, does revert back to over, under, over, under. And if it doesn't, you may have done something wrong. So that goes under, I go over goes over so I go under so that's a good check if you start doing this last half cycle and notice that you're not going over under over under at this final point then you've probably got a problem it's usually easier to start over again than try to figure out where your problem is to be perfectly honest with you Over that, under this. It's going to bring me back to the point of the beginning. Pin number one. And at the point where I can start to clean up this knot before I would double it, triple it, or go any further. Now, a very important part of what we have to do with the Turk's Head Knot before we start adding um, second and third passes is we have to dress the knot. Dressing the knot simply means make sure that all of your wraps in each direction are evenly spaced and evenly distributed from top to bottom as well as from left to right. Now you can accomplish this, I accomplish this by just working with my needle and 
kind of working my way around, pushing things down, um, looking at my different wraps, trying to make sure the space is the same, make sure it's parallel. Um, no magic to it except just take your time and go around. The, the more careful you are as you tie, the, um, the less of this you have to do. But the reason behind doing that, I can show you in two recent examples of um, projects I made. Um, if you simply look at the pattern of the white, this was in the fourth, I'm sorry, in the third pass of the knot, um, you can see the pattern twists off to the left. See, if you look straight down, the pattern is twisting to the left. That means I didn't dress the knot just right in the, um, in the beginning phases, and so the, um, the uh, pattern is as you see there. Then I made this one, and I was more cautious about dressing the knot, um, the one on the right here. And as you can see, the third pass, I did two passes in green, then a third pass in blue. You can see it's pretty much a straight line. It doesn't swirl. Now, it's not a big deal, but obviously it makes a difference in professionalism. So these are two things I made for myself, prototypes, so I wasn't too concerned with the... Um, with that perfection. But if you're making something for someone else or for a business, you want to make sure you dress the knot properly.